what's going on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of black ink crew compton this is season one episode four cheers to the three musketeers before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel what you waiting on at this point okay let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. I also want to remind you guys where you can get this shirt, Positive Vibes. You can get this shirt at Andrea's Clothing. Lucky for you, I got a little something, something for you. Use coupon code AUNTIEMO and you will get 10% off. Now listen, all of my brothers and sisters out there, we always talking about how we want to support black-owned businesses, whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. This is a black-owned business right here that you need to get into. She is doing this for mental health and mental awareness, and this is something that is near and dear to my heart because I have had my own struggles. So, if y'all really out there trying to support black-owned businesses and black girl magic and all of that, get into it. Andrea's Clothing, I will leave the link down in the description box below. And like I said, use coupon code Auntie Mo, A U N T I E M O, and you will get 10% off. Now, this episode of Black Ink Crew Compton, it was. Mm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was all right. And I want to apologize because I am bringing y'all the review a little bit late. That's because, I mean. You know, this episode was okay. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm gonna get it done. And then I was like, ooh, okay, it's Saturday. Let me go ahead and get this thing out. So, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So for my nieces and my nephews who care out there, I'm sipping on just a little bit of some Moscato today. You know what I'm saying? It is Saturday after 12 o'clock, so I can do that. Thank you very much. So this episode starts off with KP and Tim. They in the gym working now, trying to get out all their frustration. You know, they had just had the grand opening. So everybody's, you know, pumped. KP, like, I'm finna go in here. I'm finna, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna haul out up in here. Cause he's just excited for the grand opening. So of course, Tim has to let him know that he overheard Lemire talking crap about him to Nessie. That's when um, Lemire was saying the whole KP is not a good businessman. If he were in charge, this one would be going on whoop de whoop yada 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 so kp is pretty much like you know he was talking about me this fool ain't even came in here and did a tattoo just yet he ain't even show up at the grand opening yesterday but you talking about how i'm not a good businessman really okay so yeah getting the box of ring they boxing it out whoop de whoop yada 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 so at the same time um, Ink Drippin', Nessie, and Voodoo Doll, they over at the bar day drinking, right? We're kind of like what you're Andy doing, but don't tell nobody. So they over there just trying to get more acquainted because, you know, the three of them, they're new meeting each other. They're all going to be working in the same space at the tattoo shop. So they're just trying to really get to know one another, whatever, right? So they drinking and bonding, bonding and drinking. And so Nessie asked Voodoo, hey, what's up with you and Barbie? Because I know you tried to shoot your shot at Barbie. Like, what happened? Well, Voodoo tells them, you know what I'm saying? I tried to come at Barbie, and uh, basically she shot her down. So they showed a little clip where she went to her and was like, you know, Barbie, I'm really feeling you. Like, whoop through. Barbie was like, Voodoo, girl, no, uh-uh. So from that, Voodoo said she felt like she done lost her mojo. Now, what it is, she's just not feeling you like that. Like, leave that girl alone. Don't be trying to push up on her. She ain't feeling you like that. She just ain't feeling it. So, ain't dripping because, you know, he think he ladies' man or whatever, right? He cute or whatever, but boy, bye. So, he tries to give her some little pointers on what you can do to kind of be a play and kind of swarm and kind of like woo the women in or whatever. It, it was tired. It was sad. It was tired. Child, next thing you know, here come Nessie. Nah, baby, this is what you're going to have to do. You just don't even need to give her the option of whether or not she likes it or not. You just need to go right on in for the kill. Nessie grabbed this girl voodoo by the face and proceeds to start kissing her all up in the mouth. How long you done known this girl? You're kissing her all up in the mouth like that. I was taken aback. Ink was taken aback. Voodoo was taken aback. So now we all know that's a little secret Nessie been hiding is that she been feeling Voodoo on the cool. She really been wanting to do that the whole time. You feeling Voodoo, Voodoo feeling Barbie, and Barbie probably ain't feeling now one of y'all. Child, that's, it was just, it was just too doggone much. You could have just told a girl that you like her. You ain't have to do all of that. 
You ain't have to do all of that, girl. So Danielle and Lemire, they out the house chilling or whatever. She's standing up washing dishes. As soon as he come in, the baby start kicking. I thought that was so cute. So she tells him that they need to talk some, you know, some serious business. The last medical bill that they had cost damn near $900. And she like, look here, we need to get another ice cream truck popping. We need some more happy ice because we need some more Monty. But this is my question right here. And I'm not being funny when I ask. I'm being like, for real, for real. She ain't got no women's health insurance, uh, nothing funded assistance program and again i'm not being funny so don't nobody come in my comments i ain't sent it for you so don't come to me i'm saying that because here in austin texas we have what's called the women's health program and that is basically free insurance that will help women while they are pregnant it will pay for all their medical expenses it'll pay for medicines that they need i mean they can even get on wick which is women and children where they can get milk and, and formula and cheese and cereal every month hell we had that when we was kids growing up so i'm surprised that Compton don't have nothing set up like that. Because does she really not have health insurance? If you do have health insurance, you still gotta pay $900 out of pocket? Like, damn, what's really hood? So he tell her, now is not really a good time. You about to bust wide open and have a baby any day now. We don't have time to try to take on another ice cream truck. And then on top of that, the shop just opened. I done already missed that day. I'm gonna have to get in here because I got clients already lined up. So no, we can't take on no, no, it can't be no more happy ice right now. You're gonna be happy with the ice that we already got. That's what's gonna have to work. She's steady in his head like, look here, we need another truck, we need more money. But well, she does have a valid point. She got a seriously valid point. Like, yes, I understand you got this going on, but child, when that baby coming, if that baby has is gonna need the more special attention, you're going to have more expenses than what you already got in store. So I get what she's saying, but it's y'all already know Danielle is annoying as hell. She's very annoying. She really is, and I hate to say that because she's a beautiful girl. Really beautiful girl. But it's just when she opens up and a lot of negative, all that comes out is negativity. It just makes you be like, oh, girl. Just stop talking, stop talking. He said he gonna think about it. He'll let her know if they gonna get another happy ice popping. If it's up to her, child, they gonna have three, four ices popping. And he ain't gonna even know about it. All right, y'all, so it's opening day of the shop. Everybody in there, they crunk, they excited. They expecting they um, um, clients to walk in. Like, everybody is, is excited, right? It's a good day. It's a good vibe in the shop. Everything's beautiful in the neighborhood. Now, KP said his first client is Columbus Short, and he's excited about it. He's known Columbus before, so he's going to be his first client coming in. First day opening on the shop, so he ready to get it popping. Child, everybody in there in the shop chilling. Next thing you know, KP here. <coughs> KP kind of look like, hey, man, y'all hear that? I was like, KP, y'all, ain't nobody heard that. Ain't nobody heard nothing. Everybody's still partying up, whoop de woo doing what the hell they doing. Next thing you know, baby. Columbus come walking through the door. I thought he was playing because he's an actor. I thought he was acting. He come through the door on some real live long gangster stuff. He was like, hey, some Mexican outside just got his head blown off. Oh, God. I was like, whoa. What is up with all this testosterone? What is we doing? So everybody like, what? Somebody got He's like, man, oh, God. Oh, life. He just got shot. So everybody like, oh, damn. Everybody start running outside. I was with Barbie. Hey, he said somebody just got shot outside. Y'all gonna run y'all ass outside? What is y'all doing? They gonna run outside. Lo and behold, on the side of the building. Their door is here. It's like one more door on the side of the building. Guy laying in the street. and got his head blown off on guard. It's police and everybody around there. Just one block away. From where all this happened and now you know that's what kp was worried about with all the gang violence and all that stuff going on he don't want nothing to do he don't want to be associated with that hood uh -uh. so everybody go back in the shop to like try to calm down recombobulate and get ready because they got clients coming in next thing you know all the clients start pouring in everybody doing tap but then i was like where the hell columbus go columbus probably was like, uh uh I make too much money to be out here dealing with this mess. Y'all got folks out here killing, getting the head blown off on guard? No, I'm not fit to be around here. I don't know if that's what he said or not, but I know he wasn't in the next couple of segments. That fool got ghosts real quick. He was like, nuh-uh, not, no, not, not me today, say not me. So everybody's in there tatting, they doing their thing. 
Next thing you know, a Voodoo doll walks in and everybody's like, you know, yay, Voodoo, whoop de whoop, because you know, Voodoo ain't been back with the whole team since all that happened on the beach when Tim had sprayed in the face with a water gun just on some old, just being a real, real asshole, whatever, right? So Lemire has a client that comes in and Lemire is not there. It's grand opening day. He's not there. Like, what, what in the hell is really going on? You could call nobody. You can send nobody a text message or, or something with a, with, a, with a pigeon and a note on a foot or something. You couldn't send us nothing. So, KP decides to give Voodoo Doll a client. Now, it doesn't look like the client that actually came in for Lemire. And, again, um, we, well, I didn't know. I didn't realize that. But Voodoo Doll is the apprentice of KP. I didn't know that. I thought she was just a regular tattoo artist because she'd been tattooing for a year and a half. So, I thought she was a regular tattoo artist. My bad. I didn't know that. So, he decides to go ahead and give her a client because it's opening day. And, like I said, it's crazy busy. So, he was like, yeah, you know, we finna see... You know, what kind of skills you working with, see what we can do. Now, y'all, everybody got flowers. Everybody that got a tattoo got a flower. Was that in the contract? Was that some VH1 setup? Because I was like, I really didn't have nothing to just be like, wow, that's a bomb tattoo. Because everybody got flowers. It looked like the first tattoo that you get when you like 16, 17. Trust me, I know because I got my first tattoo when I was 16 with my little old boyfriend. A rose on the side of my ankle. And that's exactly what all of the tattoos look like your first tattoo. Not saying that the bad against them, not saying that they can't go hard, but I'm just saying flower, a rose. Yeah. So KP ends up meeting up with his mama. He takes her out to dinner. I love his mama. She is so cute. She look cute, look gangster mama. Like she don't play that shit whatsoever. So he takes her out to dinner. He's telling her how everything went with the grand opening, how, you know, somebody got shot right there out in front of the shop, how Lemire didn't show up, no call, no show, how he had a client that came, and how he was talking crap basically about him behind his back. And mama like, look here, um, you got to deal with enough snakes in the world out there trying to tear you down, telling you what you can and can't do. Last thing you need to deal with is somebody in your shop right up under your nose talking down on you too. Look here, it's your shop. Whether you a good businessman or a bad businessman, it's up to you to run it to the ground, up, down, side, side, whatever it is you want to do because it's your dog on shop. So mom just basically like, look here, you're going to have to go holler at homeboy let him know if he's going to be up in there work for you. He's going to have to shut his trap and stop talking crap. If so, you need going to let me know. you either going to stay and be a part of the team or you're going to roll on. And I was with mama too. Um, Don't be coming up here talking about my son about what the hell it is that he can and he can't do. This ain't heavy ice. This is... Tattoo, I am ink, or I am Compton, whatever the hell it is. But um, KP does say that Lemire sent him a text message saying that Happy Ice was the reason that he didn't make it in there for the grand opening. But still, my dude, you could have said something beforehand. You knew you weren't going to make it there the way you stormed out the last time they got into it. You ain't been back and been right with them ever since then. So you already knew you weren't going to show up. That right there is what kind of started to... I was like, oh, Lemire. I was with you, Lemire, but I already wasn't really feeling your girl, but oh my God. <sighs> okay, y'all. So KP meets with this new artist that Tim recommended to him. Her name is Alana. 20 years old. She's been tattooing for six months. She's a painter. Everything that she learned was self-taught, which is bomb. That's Girl, go, girl power. I ain't even mad at you. So she shows KP her work, you know, some tattoos that she's done. KP thinks that her work is dope. He says Lemire been acting funny anyway. He always on a hunt for new talent. Now look here. I just, look, hold on. I just want y'all to see this picture that she showed KP. Now this is one of the pictures that she showed and I was like, oh, okay. All right, it's not the best. But cha, this one here, I was like, girl. Girl. It's a portrait. And So, KP says she's dope, that um, he wants to give her a chance at the shop. 
she her whole backstory is that her father was against her tattooing, I guess because he was religious or whatever, so he kicked her out the house. She saved up enough money to buy her first tattoo gun. Ever since then, she's been tattooing. Girl, KP, KP, KP offers this girl a chair. Not an apprentice ship, offers her an actual chair at the shop. He even says she's not at the level of Lemire, but he knows Lemire been acting funny anyway. So he gonna give a shot and see how it all work out. Now, just me personally, um, I'm serious about my tattoos, okay? Now, if that's who you have representing your shop, I'm being honest, from a business standpoint, I would not wanna go in there and get a tattoo. Because just based on the work and you putting your word on, man, this is dope, this is fire, on God. All right, I mean, to each his own. And I'm sure your business ain't going to miss a beat whether or not uh, Auntie Mo there or not. But just know, child, no, sir, no, no, it won't happen. Y'all, so Nessie invites Voodoo over for drinks and girl time. Nessie just trying to do some other stuff, if you know what I'm saying. Voodoo Doll comes over there, sees the care package from Nessie's mom. She's like, oh my God, my mom's coming to visit me. I love my mom. Voodoo Doll's like, no, I don't love my mom. Then she starts getting to the whole story of how she grew up in a cult. Her stepfather was abusive. All of this. And now again, I'm not downplaying nothing that she's been in. I get it. But this is the fourth episode in. In every single episode, we hear the exact same thing. So, I feel like she needs to get some help from it if she has not already gotten some help from it because this is obviously something that is very deep and um, something that she's going to, you know, still need some time to get over because she, she said she ran away when she was 19. So, she doesn't look like she could be no older than like 24, 25. So, it's still something fresh that she's dealing with. I feel like she needs to go get the help from it. Otherwise... That's going to be the topic of her discussion with everybody she talks about is that she used to be in a cult. Girl, I get it. We understand it. Are you going to be a victim or are you going to be victorious from it? Let's focus on that. Let's let's focus on being victorious from it, girl. So, y'all, they back at the shop. The AC is out at the shop. Dang, y'all just opened up and the AC already out? Damn. Glad, y'all better be glad y'all ain't in Texas. You would, all oh, your little chocolate would melt up in that Oh boy, let me tell you. Anyways, everybody at the shop chilling, whoop de whoop. Next thing you know, Alana walks in. She walks in and says, like, Hey, how you doing? Barbie's like, I'm good. How can I help you? Um, you have an appointment? She's like, No, I'm the new tattoo artist. Barbie's like, Says who? She's like, Uh, says KP. Said it with an attitude with the hand and all that. Says KP. All right, cool. Everybody's like, Oh, okay. Well, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. How long you been tattooing for? Six months. Oh, and how old are you? I'm 20. And they also, oh, you're an apprentice. And she's like, no, I have an actual chair. I'm an artist. Everybody kind of had that same look like WTF is going on up in Chiang. What you mean you 20, you've been tattooing for six months and you got a whole chair up in here like what? Voodoo doll, she had every right to be upset and be in her feelings. She been doing it for a year and a half and she older than this girl. And you just gonna let somebody fresh up off the street that do portraits like, whoa, to just come in and have a whole chair? Like really, how you gonna do that KP, that's wrong. I was right there with him on that, right there with him, right? So of course Lana, she's over here like, well obviously I'm better than you because I'm here and I have a chair. Voodoo was getting mad, and I don't blame her whatsoever. She was getting mad. Just then, another one of Lemire's clients walks in, and she's like, here, I'm, you know, I'm here to do a tattoo for, you know, I'm here to get a tattoo by Lemire. They trying to call him. He not answering the phone. You know what this, this fool is at? What the hell he doing? This fool over here with Danielle looking at trucks for happy ice. 
Now he's clearly telling Danielle, look here, I got to go. I got a client waiting on me. I didn't come here to buy no truck. We said we was coming here to look at trucks. Don't get happy about no doggone truck. Cause we ain't leaving with, with one. But again, she's steady in his ear. I'm not leaving till I get a truck. We need this, whoop, 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 whoop. The salesman steady going around showing them different trucks. He showed him one truck, 120K, like what? Boy, I was with him. Girl, get your ass on up off the truck. We can't afford this. What is you doing up in here? He steady telling her, look here, I got to go. I got a whole client wait on me back at the shop. He finna get ready to leave. He tell her, don't swipe my credit card and buy no dog on truck. And you ain't telling me about nothing. Now, Lamir, that's your first mistake right there. You leaving this girl with your finances and she love you, but she don't like you. She gonna buy some stuff. She gonna buy all kind of stuff, and you ain't gonna know it until the doggone bill come later on, cause she ain't gonna tell you about it right then and there. Boy, you stupid, you already knew that. Lemire leaves, finally shows up at the shop an hour and a half late. Really, Lemire, really? After no call, no show on the first day, they already trying to call him, let him know about this client. So guess what? In the process of them waiting, Tim, no, um, KP decides he gonna give that new client to Alana. Not one of the regular tattoo artists that's experienced has been there doing it. Not even Voodoo, who is his, who is his apprentice. He gonna give it to a whole new chick straight up off the street. Now again, if this how you handling your business player, no sir, no sir. So when Lemire gets there, of course he got nasty and Voodoo like, um, he like, where my client? Um, you was an hour and a half late, so that's a new chick that's here. She finna get ready to tattoo him right now. She been tattooing for six months since she's only 20 years old. She back there right now drawing up stuff, getting ready to put it on your client. He like, what? Here come Barbie out the side. Well, you wasn't here. He had to make a boss move. Here come Lemire. That wasn't a boss move. That was a dumbass move. Lemire, now, I was with you up until then. Lemire's energy was all messed up when he came in there all messed up now he did kind of come in like i apologize whoop the whoop i'll explain it later where my client like no bruh you could have reached out to the team a long time ago and said something they don't know that he's got all this going on with you know his unborn child with the possible disability with the medical expenses they got they don't know all of this they just see him coming in having an attitude and that's all they running with that's their problem with not communicating how you feel and what you need to get on up off your chest. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't understand it's not what you say, it's how you say it to people and how you come at people and how they're going to receive it. You can't expect people to receive what you're trying to say when you're coming at them messed up. Because a lot of times they're going to give you that same energy, probably even more than what you bargained for. Trust me, I know. I'm them people. I'm just saying. So, next thing you know, him and Tim start going at it because Lemire is going off on... Like, he's just going off. He's mad. He's pissed off. Then Tim is like, well, if you don't like it, there's the door right there. Tim, once again, who are, what do you do? What do you do, Tim? God, poor God. Why? For what? What do you do besides be there for KP and whatever he need? Uh, maybe that is your job, to be there and do it. Okay, that's your job time. We gonna leave it at that then. So Lemir pissed off, he walks out. Then they all in there talking crap. Nessie's like, look here, y'all not finna sit here and be talking crap about my homeboy right here, my presence, oh God, you know what I'm saying? You not finna be talking about him. Then Nessie starts to get into it with Tim. Tim goes over to her station and starts un and unplugging her equipment. Like, you can go too if you don't like it. Once again, Tim, Sat down somewhere, boy. Then Ink Drippin' walks up. He starts getting in Nessie's face. They start getting into it. From then, Lemire come walking back in. KP looking at Lemire like, bruh, I thought you left. What you coming back in here? Lemire came back on that. You know when you arguing with somebody and you you storm out, you leave because you super, you big mad, you bad, you mad in real life. And then you get about halfway down, you're like, oh, hell no. I forgot to tell. So you come back in and another thing. That's how Lemire came back. Lemire came back on it and another thing. They were like, what is wrong? What? What? And another thing, what? I just want to let you know, Tim, I don't care nothing about what you say because you just a flunky up in here anyway, which is true. He said what well, we've all been thinking, what we all pretty much know. But mind you, ain't none of them going to say nothing to KP because they don't want to piss KP off. Cha. Next thing you know, Tim and Lemire up in each other's face going at it. 
Ink dripping feels like he gotta come get in it. So Ink dripping then goes and gets up in Lemire's face. So you have Tim and Ink dripping in Lemire's face. Everybody's getting ready to fight. It looks like a whole big old fiasco. And then the episode ends from there. I don't like to see men fight. Just me and some in my spirit make me nervous when men fight. Because they don't fight like like women fight. I mean, I can watch it. Ain't, but when men fight, it just irks my spirit. I don't like seeing King fight like that. But the episode ended from there. I'm thinking that they make up because on the next episode, they're going to be at some photo shoot together. Everybody. But if y'all watched the episode, let me know. If it was anything that I left out, please comment down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, like comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.